Welcome back to the Godot Report. Juan, Godot's lead developer, is stepping down from the rendering aspect of Godot. He said he's too busy to continue working on it. Quote, I will still be involved in technical discussions, but save for eventual work on SDFGI and VoxelGI, which I want to redo based on a lot of new ideas, I will not be doing much implementation work. Development of Godot's rendering systems will now largely fall to a team of developers, namely Clay John, Mux, Jfons, and Hugo, and Lon Jelly, who has been working on the Godot 3 branch. Juan will help other contributors merge their changes into Godot and help fix remaining issues in efforts to get Godot version 4.0 released this year. Yes, you heard Heard that right this year 2022 so what is the team going to be working on it's been officially announced that godot 4 will be getting deferred rendering this is a huge announcement deferred rendering is going to bring godot's 3d capabilities into the modern era and when we talk about rendering here basically we're describing the process of a computer drawing every object or mesh in a scene and lighting those objects accordingly with the final image being displayed on the user's computer monitor Let's talk about forward rendering first. The current Godot 4 build uses forward rendering implemented with the Vulkan API. To put it simply, forward rendering iterates through every mesh and light in a scene and draws it. This method of drawing a 3D scene is very efficient. However, as more and more lights are added to a scene, performance will decrease rapidly. And we're not just talking about GPU performance. Every draw call is a command sent by the CPU to the GPU, so a complex scene will also put a heavy load on the CPU as well. Deferred rendering looks to separate this tight connection between the number of meshes and number of lights. Instead of calculating every light on every mesh all at once, deferred rendering splits the mesh calculations and lighting calculations into two separate stages. The mesh and material data is written and merged into what's called a G buffer. This compresses all the meshes and material data into a single G buffer. So after that, the computer simply has to iterate through every light source to light the G buffer. This brings the number of draw calls way down compared to forward rendering. The problem with deferred rendering, however, is the G buffer takes up a ton of memory, especially in more modern games which are using 4K textures. This is the main bottleneck of deferred rendering, and it's why some modern games are actually going back to forward rendering for better graphics and performance. For example, the latest Doom games use forward rendering. Newer APIs like Vulkan and DirectX 12 make draw calls very cheap to do on the CPU. That and other pre-processing techniques like dividing the scene into clusters greatly increase the performance of forward rendering on modern hardware. Now, this lesson wouldn't be complete without a bit of computer science history. The first game to implement deferred rendering was actually the 2001 game Shrek for the original Xbox. LearnGodot.com is offering its first course, Learn Programming in the Godot Engine. In this course, you'll learn the fundamentals of programming and game development using the Godot Game Engine. You don't need any programming experience to take this course. Everything will be taught as you go. Use coupon code KAIJU for 10% off your first order. A recent Twitter poll revealed that the majority of the Godot community now uses Godot for 3D projects. It seems Godot's reputation at being bad at 3D is slowly changing. Another Godot showcase was released. This time they interviewed Leszek Novak from Two Dynamic Games about their latest release, Lumencraft. Lumencraft is a top-down shooter with base-building elements, where you're a lonely little digger sent into bug-invested underground caves. The game was made with Godot Engine 3 and features a fully destructible environment, fluid simulation, and dynamic lighting. They said the most enjoyable part of game development was implementing new features. Quote, Once you finish your cool spear combo or flashy lava particles or extremely complex custom map editor that does wonders under the hood, looking at the final result and playing it is a very satisfying experience. I will link the full article in the description. Mechanic 8230 Episode 1 is an adventure game in the point-and-click genre. Help the mechanic find his robot friend R02 and together unveil the secrets of the world destroyed by the Cataclysm. Run The World In Between is a new die and retry platformer game with a procedurally generated path. Be fast, jump, and run to unlock new content. Travel to the sleepy village of Catterwall Way and rebuild your grandmother's cat cafe. Renovate your restaurant, befriend the local cats and townsfolk, forge lasting friendships, unravel catty mysteries, and build a home for dozens of unique felines and cat cafe manager.
Soldier is a 3D classic JRPG style turn-based tactics game inspired by the Trails series and many other games. Move, attack, skill, item, and wait. Use all the actions you are familiar with to destroy the evil enemies. Rocket Bot Royale is a frantic online battle royale set on a destructible sinking island. Fire rockets from your custom robo tank to eliminate the competition using advanced tactics and powerful weapons. Nutlet in Microchip Mayhem is a cheery, bright, fast paced 3D platformer. Dash through the environments, avoiding enemies and flying through crazy jumps. Your best friend Ingrid called you to have a sleepover. It was supposed to be a nice evening, but when you find a strange board game, things seem to change in the Ouija board. Play as an evil mummy who has rightfully sealed away for millennia until a foolish archaeologist disturbed his slumber. Guardians of the tomb try to contain you while you recover your preserved organs to gain supernatural abilities and clear them all in Sarcophagon. Ghost Hand is a metroidvania set in a fantasy world where your only means of survival is your own ability to solve problems. Sling VR is the first and best slingshot game made for the Oculus. You can hit fruits and coconuts. You can break pots and hunt birds. Some monkeys on the beach will try to hit you with coconuts. JP Study Buddy is a flashcard style app to learn various things about the Japanese language in Japan, like the kana, kanji, vocab, grammar, geography. Roma Invicta combines action-packed real-time battles with turn-based strategy on a big campaign map. Supply your legions and conquer ancient Gao turn by turn. Fight by yourself or hand over your soldiers to the AI and enjoy the spectacle. Protect a psychedelic world from bizarre beasts and punishing bosses in this poetic mystery filled with secrets, puzzles, and music in Lila's Sky Arc. Dark Crypt is a turn-based puzzler with a horror theme. Sneak through an old crypt where an ancient evil slumbers. Its shadow is corrupting the tomb and the once buried bodies now haunt the walls. This evil must be sealed at all costs. The Zone, Stalker Stories, is a post-apocalyptic world of strangeness and confusion, treasure and danger, exploration and tactical card battles. Takara Cards is a tactical deck builder with light RPG elements. Pilot medieval ships using cards and defeat galactic dragons. Each space adventure offers new challenges and events. Super Mario 63 Redux is a remake of the fan game Super Mario 63. It features all new graphics with a fun, colorful art style, all drawn from scratch. Fully reimagined dialogue written with heart, care, and passion, and a catchy original soundtrack full of remixes and original tunes. Fursifer's Fungin is a loot-based dungeon crawler action roguelike. Forge powerful character builds using common, rare, and legendary items and upgrade your collection for following runs. As usual, like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm. Thanks for watching.